30 years ago, if you look at where Ireland was, it kind of gives you a better sense of, of how things were able to come together. Like in the 1980s, there had been 25,000 women had moved from Ireland to, the, to, to New York City. Over, over 100,000 Irish citizens came to the United States in the 1980s after the economic recession there. And then a lot of those women emigrated to New York and they had come to Gaelic Park where we are here every Sunday, watched men playing, you know. Now they had given women exhibition slots. They had treated it a little bit, kind of like a, like a joke, but more like kind of a, it's funny, here's, here's an hour for the women. But a lot more women that were emigrating over had played um, football at an underage and at adult level. So that, the, you know, when they moved here and watched the men playing, there was a, a, a great feeling of, well, if they can do it, why can't we? And the really, the, the kind of spark that lit the, uh, the ladies association was, um, back in the, the US, uh, the North American Championships in Boston in 1991, where a bunch of girls from New York had gone up and watched girls from all over, you know, Irish women in San Francisco, Philadelphia, Chicago, playing against each other in a representative game. We hadn't seen football, ladies football in New York. It was all camogie when I came here first. And uh, we were watching it and we were just like, wow. This is a cool sport. And there's one thing that's sure to annoy any New Yorker is that if you ask them, well, if someone can do it in Boston or if someone can do it in Philadelphia, why can't we do it here? So uh, Terry Connachton, who was a former GA chairman at the time, he, he brought a meeting and that was literally their slogan. They have this in Boston, they have it in Philadelphia. Why can't we do it? About, say, maybe 15 people showed up for the meeting. And out of that meeting, uh, seven teams were formed. And uh, the interest was so much that by the start of the playing season, there were seven clubs and 250 uh, girls from all over, women who had never played GA to women who had played, you know, when they were younger at home. And uh, they all came together and, you know, they started this, the seven former starting clubs were uh, Donegal, Cavan, um, Kerry, Leitrim, Offaly, and uh, Westmeath and Roscommon. You know, that really lit, lit, a, lit a match and, you know, that fire's been burning ever since, thanks to, thanks to those women. I didn't know any footballers, and we were playing camogie and soccer. So I was just saying to the girls on the camogie team and the soccer team, oh, do you want to try out ladies football? You know, let's try it, it's something new, and you know, it's very big in Ireland, and I just watched it down in North America, and uh, let's try and put a team together and see, see how it goes. And, um, we did and, and that's the way a lot of teams formed was from other sports. Even after setting up the New York LGFA it wasn't all smooth sailing as some people still struggled to accept the game. There was a big rift. Um, the men, you know, they accepted camogie mm -hmm. because camogie was, uh, uh, you know, big in Ireland and it, then when we started the football they were like what's this well, is it playing football now you know and we're like yeah yeah it's big in Ireland and you know we want to grow it here and really and truly in the 90s we had minimal playing facilities we had minimal training facilities and um, we got our finals in Gaelic Park but that was the only games that were hosted because at that time Gaelic Park was a, a grass field it couldn't take more than three games on a Sunday and that was it um, so we were playing in some dreadful conditions when you think about it and uh, you know we had to set up our own pitches and everything like that so that you know I mean they, they were things that slowed down our development I think. To be honest growing up we never like ladies football wasn't as big as it is now like the only ladies football we had was whatever was on down here in the park. You know we had to fight to get our final in Gaelic Park in 95 and we got the papers involved and had a little protest outside Gaelic Park all the captains of every team and uh, just to get a little bit of notice and you know and get some support behind us and it worked you know we got into the park and I'll never forget the first ladies final in 95 and um, you know they were presenting the cup to us after and uh, I was like so where is the chairperson of the New York GA you know why isn't he here they said well he said, I'm going to leave while this game is on. Call me and let me know when it's over and I'll be back. So I marched right over with the cup and I sat down beside him. And I said, uh, I think it's time you get over yourself. You know, I said, uh, this is the fastest growing sport in Ireland and we want very much to play it over here. And we need the support from you guys. And, uh, 
you know, he cracked a smile and we got talking and, you know, and it kind of broke the ice and we had a couple of drinks and he came back to the park with me. <laughs> so that was it. Then when the idea came around about entering the junior championship, uh, there was great excitement, great buzz. Um, I think it actually, the belief came when we went back in 94 and did an all-star tour. We had done really, really well in all the games and, you know, it was kind of like a trial run, if you, you know, could call it that. And then we said, you know what, we'll just put in a letter and ask to, to enter the Junior Championship. And we were accepted and we played in 95, we played, that was our first All-Ireland semi-final. It was against, it was against um, Tyrone and um, we lost by a point. Yeah, so it was, it was, I, I'll never forget, we went to the Ardbine Hotel after for food and there was just complete silence at the table, you know. We weren't fit to talk, we were just devastated. Eventually we beat Waterford in 99 in the All-Ireland semi-final and made it to the final against Tyrone again. <laughs> And um, that was our first trip to uh, the All-Ireland Final. Within seven years of being established, they were able to, to take part in an All-Ireland Final. And I think it just showed, everyone just took a big deep breath and took a step back and was like, geez, like these, these girls can actually, you know, they're not just going over there to tick a box or to, or to you know, fulfill a fixture. They're actually going there and they can reach an All-Ireland Final. Like New, no New York team had ever even come, come near to that. I'll, I'll never forget that day actually when we ran onto the field in Croke Park and uh, first of all there was this big boo coming from the the crowd and I guess they thought that we were American it was like wow what's this all about <laughs> but I think that what they thought you know who are these outsiders coming over here playing an All-Ireland final and uh, you know obviously they're going to root for the home side you know the game didn't go our way that way that day. Uh, we were up by a point at half time and then I think we lost by seven or eight points in the end. Another, another devastating blow, but anyway. I think everybody was inspired by that and I think that that was a catalyst for the, for the next couple of years. Like the membership grew year on year until after 11 with, uh, with that 1999 uh, women's team. Like, so it was really interesting to see that like that kind of kind of a, a thunderbolt moment where a team gets to an all Ireland final you're like wow we can actually do this and compete and we're really close. Playing in the All-Ireland in 99 kind of lifted the sport here again and new teams came out of that. The fact that we were the first New York team to actually play in an All-Ireland championship final to be honest everybody really just supported us 100 percent. That kind of kind of a, a thunderbolt moment where a team gets to an all and final you're like wow we can actually do this and compete and we're really close and it's just you know we, we're you know we're, we're we're almost there we just can touch it like but we just have to get over the line and that's what we're hoping to get this year like it's like when you get so close and you just you want that win and you keep coming back like we've lost three all ireland finals yeah we've lost three all ireland finals and um it's like okay, I was so close, I'm going back, we're going to do it this time, I'm going back again, I'm going back again. And, and you know, that's why this trip this year, like, you know, it's our 30th anniversary and I would honestly love to finally get that All-Ireland in the bag <laughs> that has eluded us for this long. It's interesting, I think some of the, 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 the girls' daughters who played back then are going to be playing, you know, for the New York team this year, like, so... That'll be, that'll be interesting, like hopefully it goes better. <laughs>